I've seen a lot of our members just get one great JV and ha have that accelerate them to seven figures and beyond. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's High Level Sales Sessions. Today we're joined by Josh Nelson of the Seven Figure Agency. Josh, welcome back. Thanks for hanging out. Absolutely, pumped to be here. Glad to, glad to share and I love everything you guys are up to here at High Level, it's amazing. So Josh, um, for those who don't know you yet, why don't you give us a quick bio, tell us about the Seven Figure Agency um, and your history. Yeah, so actually I run an agency called Plumbing and HVAC SEO, which is a digital marketing agency serving the plumbing and HVAC space. Um, we made the Inc. 5000 list of the fastest growing companies the last four years in a row, um, do about 370,000 in monthly recurring revenue. Um, a couple of years ago, once we grew to a million dollars, I decided, you know, there's a lot of people asking me about how we grow our agency and how we have the recurring revenue growth um, and just kind of looking for ideas and strategies. And so I said, hey, why don't I create a training that kind of maps this out? And that's when I started Seven Figure Agency, kind of a passion project that I do in addition to our, our core business, showing digital marketing agencies how to grow, how to scale, make more money, have more freedom and have a bigger impact in their, in their businesses and their lives. That's great. And this is, it's so great when we get to have you on because obviously you're still in the trenches with your agency, but you're also working with I don't know how many how many agencies do you think you've worked with or coached since you started? Probably worked with, you know, in the in the five hundred territory of about five hundred digital marketing agencies, and wow. um, you know, about twenty five of them have gone to seven figures and beyond. So, um, on my mission right now is to help one hundred digital marketing agencies go to seven figures over the next five years. So, really Very excited cool. about that. Awesome. Well, let's talk about what we're going to cover today. I know you brought um, you brought some slides that we're going to go through. So let's fire it up. Let's hop into it. Absolutely. Let me share my screen here. And you know, the, the topic you wanted me to talk about was all around sales and business development, right? Yep. So each Thursday, we have this new series. We're calling it Sales Sessions, where basically we want to bring in guest speakers that we know are great at sales, helping people become better um, salesmen for their agencies, their businesses. So so yeah, anything, it's pretty much open-ended within that uh, lens. Good deal. So I'm gonna unpack you know, some of the different sales models we found to work well and the a shift that we made that really changed the game for us in terms of growing faster and making our lives and our businesses much easier. Um, so like, give me a, a like or a sounds good in comments if that's what you wanna hear. Um, and then I'm open for questions, right? This is a live session. so. I'm happy to take this any direction you guys want in terms of how do you, you know, attract more clients, how do you convert at a higher level, and how can you grow your, your digital marketing agency and, and land more clients more quickly. Uh, but really when it comes to landing clients for your agencies, um, there's like a finite number of plays that you can run. And, and the, the first play everyone knows about, everybody like thinks about is, is cold outreach, right? Scraping lists, yeah. buying lists, sending cold emails, I'm not sure if that slide updated on the screen, but um, that's kind of where we all start, right? Whether it's cold emailing, cold dropping in, um, you know, cold messaging people on, on social media and, um, and it works, right? I think the first 10 clients we landed in our agency came straight from cold outreach, right? Cold emails with a very specific offer, solicited a response, solicited a sales meeting, and then turned into, turned into a deal. The beauty of cold outreach is it's low cost, right? and you can hustle your way through it. The, the con or like the struggle with cold outreach is that it's very low, um, very low influence, right? When somebody yeah. responds to you via cold outreach, they're just kind of like, well, whatever, I don't know you from Adam. I don't really know whether you know what you're doing or not. Explain to me why I should give you 10 minutes of my time, right? So your close ratios on cold outreach is, is relatively low. The hey Josh, do you want to try to unshare and share again? We're still seeing that first slide. Okay, let's see what the deal on that is. Sure. While you're doing that, that brings up a question. Do you still do cold outreach at your agency or do you feel like it's a tactic at the very beginning when you don't have ad budgets, but once you get over that hump, you don't really return to the land of cold outreach? I think you're always gonna to wanna to do a little bit of cold outreach in your business, right? You wanna be adding people to the, to the, to the list. You wanna be you know, doing strategic cold outreach. I think you want to go from just randomly scraping names of anybody in your vertical to 
selecting the right kind of prospects and reaching out to them in a, in a high, high value, high touch way. Right. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes, but it's not just random mass emails. It's more, let's select a hundred prospects and territories where we want to grow the agency and let's reach out to them in an intentional way. So great question. So we got cold outreach. The next is really marketed lead generation, right? Which is eating our own dog food, running Facebook ads, running pay-per-click ads. Um, and that's a great way to, that's a great way to land clients, very high leveraged. And, um, you know, your sales resistance on marketed lead generation is going to be less. The challenge is with marketed lead generation is you have to have money to spend, right? If you don't have at least a thousand to $2,000 to put into the Facebook ads or to put into the Google ads, uh, you know, you, you can't do that, right? So yeah. it's something you have to have the budget set aside and it doesn't always work right out of the gates, right? What worked six months ago with Facebook ads is not working as well today, right? So you have to constantly be testing and you have to have a little bit of wiggle room to figure things out as you go. Uh, the next is, is inbound marketing. And this is really my favorite play. You know, it's, it's putting out good content into the internet through content, through webinars, through books, through cheat sheets, through case studies, putting it up on YouTube, putting it on iTunes, putting it on a blog, sharing it in industry groups and associations, um, adding value in advance and getting prospects to come to you pre-positioned to buy. Um, this is my favorite play. If you look at plumbing and HVAC SEO, a lot of our business actually comes from inbound marketing. Um, and it's the beauty of it is the sales resistance through inbound is, is the lowest, right? They're going to be leaning in. They're going to have been you know, exposed to your value. And they're more saying, you know, how much is it going to cost for me to hire you? Then, hey, explain to me why I should give you five minutes of my time. Um, the con to inbound is that it takes some time, right? You can't just create content and put it up and magically get your calendar full. You have a gestation period from when you create that content, from when you start to nurture that database to when those deals uh, start to flow in. Uh, the other play that I think most digital marketing agencies missed is associations and speaking. Like I'm a big advocate of being in one particular vertical and like positioning yourself as the expert in that space. So we do plumbing and HVAC. Um, you know, I know a lot of you guys deal in different verticals, but I found one of the best shortcuts is to join the association in the vertical or the niche that you tend, you want to focus on for a couple of reasons. The first is you get access to the list of members and you can draft on the affinity of that. So, you know, like as opposed to cold emailing somebody or sending a direct mail piece to someone at random, you can say, Hey, we're, we're reaching out because we're also members of this association and we want to introduce ourselves. And so it kind of gives you the seed of, a reason to communicate an affinity that you can draft on. Uh, the other beautiful part about associations is they gather, right? They gather a couple times per year on a national basis, and they usually gather on a on a regional basis a couple times a month for continuing education. So by choosing a vertical, joining the association, and then getting active with it, you can get in front of them. You can speak at their events. You can put on uh, co-hosted webinars and things like that. Um, again, if we look at our business, a lot of our, our business comes from associations and speaking and inbound marketing. Uh, and you might say, well, COVID-19, these companies, these organizations aren't gathering right now. Um, and you're right. Like we, I'm going to be speaking at Service World, which is a big industry association event in our niche in September. It was supposed to be live and we had the booths and the whole nine yards. And of course, they've, they've since moved it to virtual. But the reality is, these guys still have to do their continuing education. They're still going to get together in a virtual environment. And so, you know, I've, a lot of our members are now getting more speaking opportunities than they could have had otherwise because these guys are doing virtual summits, like hundreds of people on a Zoom session. And it's a great way to position yourself in front of that group and, and you know, be able to add value and get clients to come to you pre-positioned to buy. Josh, and I've then, heard like, you, sorry to jump in. I've heard you mention yeah. that before the associations, and I love that. Is it true, my intuition would tell me that those associations are always looking for speakers, right? Like if you've ever been a part of association, if you're in charge of planning the events, it's like you need to find people to get in front of your audience, right? So it's probably pretty easy to land those speaking gigs once you're through the gates. 100%, yeah, they, they're desperate. I literally desperate to find someone that can come in 
and entertain their group and add value to their group. Um, and so if you like, if, if I look back at our first client that we got in our vertical, which is plumbing, um, plumbing, you know, there's 80,000 plumbing and HVAC companies across the United States alone. And there's associations that gather all over the country. I looked up Miami Plumbing Association and there happened to be one in my backyard. I live in Miami, I operate in Miami. Um, I reached out to the association director and said, hey, you know, when do you guys get together? I found out they get together once a month. And I, I think I spent 50 bucks in order to sponsor their dinner. And I was able to go <laughs> stand, do a 10 minute talk and landed the president of the association, uh, Southwest Plumbing back in, you know, seven, seven or eight years ago. So yeah, you, awesome. can, you can do that in every local market and just about every vertical. Um, and, the, and the more positioning assets you have, the easier it is to get those types of opportunities. So if you've got recorded webinars, if you've got a podcast speaking to your specific niche, if you publish a book, you know, the complete guide to online marketing for, you know, roofing contractors, those assets make you an expert, which makes it really easy for them to be able to say, hey, we chose this guy because he's an expert and he's going to come in and educate you guys on how to generate more leads or be more productive with your marketing online, which of course the members want. Yeah. Awesome. Let me ask you the question from the community before you continue. Backing Absolutely. up to the cold outreach, do mm -hmm. you guys, is there a tool that you recommend over others as far as getting lists? Yeah. So, I mean, we've been through the gamut on this, right? There's so many ways to, to scrape lists. There's so many ways to um, to gain access to lists. I've got another slide like this that, that kind of shows you on a triangle. You know, you can, you can get a list one of three ways, right? You can buy a list, right? Which is to go to SIC code or go to Info USA and get a, like a solid list. You can, um, you can scrape a list, which is, you know, at this point, I believe to be almost a waste of time because the, the data that you get from a scrape list is just, it's such fragmented information. You can't tell who you're dealing with. You get like an info ad or a help ad, and it doesn't really get delivered anywhere. Um, I've seen a lot of people like spin their wheels a lot of time with bad lists. Um, and then you could you could borrow a list, which means you find a JV, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, who has access to the group that you want to be able to access. Um, or you could build your own list, right? You could, um, you know, build your list by putting out content, by getting people to opt in. And of course, that's your highest value list. Um, so kind of the, the, the long answer to the question is, my preference to give a list to do any kind of outreach is to join the association. That's going to be your highest quality list. They had to spend money to be a part of the association. Um, and they're going to, they're like real. Like there's somebody on the other side of that email that answers it and is responsive and takes their business seriously. Um, and so that's my favorite. My second favorite would be to buy a list, right? Because then you can at least say, I want this type of company that has this amount of revenue that's going to have the propensity to invest at the level I need them to, uh, to justify my expenses, right? To, to be a good client for us. Um, and so SIC code is my favorite source to buy a list. My second favorite source would be reach marketing. Um, reach marketing pulls against a lot of different data providers can usually get you a name, owner, um, email address, a couple different email variations. Um, I'm not a fan of scraping at this point, uh, unless you're just going to be scraping for the sake of creating a custom audience to create a lookalike audience to market more broadly on, on like Facebook advertising and things like that. Does it answer that cool. question, Chase? Yeah, absolutely. So SICcode.com, it looks like is the website of the one that you, you like? Mm -hmm. Yep, solid solid provider of data. You can usually get a high percentage match rate to an email address. Um, and it's like anything else. You can build your, your foundation on sand or you can build a foundation on, on rock, right? And to me, having a scrape list, you're building a foundation on sand. You don't know how much revenue the company's doing. You don't know if they're worth your time. You don't know if they're a good quality fit. We're a bought list where you know, I only want to deal with million dollar plus companies within my space. You can hand select those prospects and you can be reaching out to them in an intentional way, which is going to be worth your time. So when they do reply back, yeah, I'd be interested in that. Or when they do reply back, yeah, send that over. Uh, you've got somebody that's worth the chase as opposed to um, a dead end, which happens in my experience, like 90% of the time with scraped you know, cold lists and things like that. Cool. Okay, so the, the like the fifth play and the play that most digital marketing agencies miss as well is joint ventures. Um, 
The fact is there's people that already serve the ideal client that you want in just about any vertical. It's like within plumbing, there are strategic consultants. There are people that already sell you know, different products. There are dealer groups that sell the equipment. Um, and these companies have a, have a database of your ideal prospect. They usually do some type of gathering. They have access to do like webinars and things like that. Um, and their endorsement can carry you a long way. Um, I think Jay Abraham is famously quoted as saying, uh, any business is one joint venture away from a million dollar business. Um, I found it to be true. Like anybody is one joint venture away from a seven figure digital marketing agency. And so if you're looking at, at like prospecting and you're looking at list building, if you're not spending a little bit of your time looking for joint venture opportunities that you can you know, educate their group, send their group a copy of your book, do a webinar for their group, um, whether it's because of just added value or because they want to have a percentage of the revenue. Um, I've seen a lot of our members just get one great JV and ha have that accelerate them to seven figures and beyond. So nice. these are these are the, the key plays we're finding work best. I'd be curious, are there any questions about any of these other plays other than the, the cold outreach stuff? Um, no, I think we're good. What one cool. question that just came to me real quick is when we're talking about like those list sources, what, what would you typically expect to spend on a good list? Ah, uh, geez. I mean, depending, right? If you're going after a national list or if you're just going after a local list, um, I believe it's somewhere in the dollar fifty per record range. Um, okay. If you're buying bigger volume than that, it could be it could be less. Um, and then you're always going to want to take that list and run it through that Never Balance, and then run it through um, like Hunter.io, so you can get deeper data. You know, usually you're going to get one email. You want to get two or three emails. What's the email that's listed on their BBB? What's their email that's listed in other places so that you have different mechanisms to get their attention? Um, you know, on that topic of cold outreach, you know, since we're, we're talking about, it, I think most people just want to send an email blast or a bunch of email blasts and call it a day. Um, mm -hmm. I found that with your cold outreach, it needs to be cross channel, right? So you want to send an email blast, but then you also want to like the person on Facebook. You want to friend them. Um, you want to connect with them on, on LinkedIn. You want to have an intentional communication that is value added and not just, hey, you, do you want more leads or something like yeah. that? Um, that's where we find so, the best results. Um, okay, we've got a question here. Is there a systematic way to look for joint ventures or collaborations? Yeah, I mean, so really like the best, the best way, first of all, is to look for like the people that are most aligned with you that aren't going to be selling the same exact thing that you do which is usually you start with the coaches and consultants, right? There are coaches in every vertical that show their, their members or the people they serve how to generate more leads. I mean, how to grow their business, how to be more profitable, right? And so they want their members to win. If you can come in and say, hey, I see your members need, you know, they need more leads. They need better sales opportunities. I can show them how to do that and or I can do it for them. That's, that's aligned, right? They've got access. These people, their members will like do whatever they tell them to do and they can plug you in, right? So that's the first place. Look, just search for your vertical coaches and consultants and come up with a short mm -hmm. list of people there. Um, the next thing you want to do is look for like the dealer groups and the industry groups that your client buys equipment from. So if you think about HVAC, you know, Bryant and the other big HVAC manufacturers they've got a bunch of dealers that are our ideal client. And there's a, there's kind of a joined purpose because if I can help their clients sell more of their equipment, it's a win for the manufacturer. And so it's a win for the dealer, right? Mm -hmm. So that's another place to look for like people already selling to the people within your space. Um, and then you can also look for people that already run like large Facebook groups within your vertical. So like plumbing, so it's like plumbing, Facebook group, plumbing um, groups on Facebook and find the people that already have big groups on Facebook that you can plug into as well. Because a lot of them don't really have a good monetization strategy for their Facebook group as it is. Yeah, Rich, so um, he followed up with that question, like how do, how do you find them? So Rich, I loved Josh's example of people in, that are close to you but not competitive. So like at our old agency, we used to look for people who specialized in sales coaching because we were marketing, right? But if you find a sales coach for your industry, 
that's a great JV opportunity. You guys share potential clients. You go in as a package, you get in their newsletter, things like that. If you're in like the gym space, think about who makes the equipment, those types of people. Can you get in their newsletter? Can you reach out to them? So it's it's legwork. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. I don't think there's like an automated way to find JVs. Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna shoot one email and be like, hey, I see that you sell in my group. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to do a webinar for it with you. Right. You have to develop a relationship. Okay. You gotta reach out and find a win-win. Um, I find a lot of times our JVs come from the associations, right? when the associations get together and they're like all the people selling to everybody in that space has a booth. Um, there's opportunities during the downtimes to meet the other vendors, to go to dinner with people. And that's how you meet them and develop relationships. And you find, Hey, look, you know, I can plug you into our group. You plug me into your group. And it's usually content based, right? So it's like, you're going to send a copy of your book out to all of their clients, or you're going to do a webinar for all of their clients. That's informational value added what leads to them being like, wow, I want to hire this guy or this company or this gal to do this stuff for me. Thanks guys. Sorry. I unmuted myself there, but yeah, thanks a lot. I, I, that does help the um, yeah. I, I think of a joint venture or collaboration as just same customers, but don't compete. Yep. Anybody just as simple as that same customers don't compete. And um, yeah, they're, they're, sometimes there isn't a good systematic way to find them all. You have to just kind of scrap, but uh that was, that was my question, little. man. Yep, little by little. And you should have like a, a target list, like a dream list of 10 to 15 joint ventures that you're like, man, if I could get any one of these 10, it could open up a seven-figure opportunity for me. And you never think of it as a shotgun approach. It's more you, you reach out and say, hey, I'd like to connect, right? And you reach out the same way you would cold outreach, right? You send, you send a friend request. You send a LinkedIn request. You send a, hey, I was just checking out your podcast. I thought it was awesome. You know, I think we've got some things in, in common. You send something in the mail, like a copy of your book, and you nurture the relationship to the point where they know you, they like you, they trust you, they believe you can actually help their members. And that's when these, these relationships really start to blossom. Are you a Twitter guy, Josh? Because I feel like I've had the best success of targeting people by following them on Twitter and then just waiting for that right tweet they put out to jump in. And it always comes at some point. Nice. I'm not really much on Twitter, but I, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Same with same with Instagram. Like if they happen to be active on Instagram, people so rarely get a, I don't even know what it is, but they, they rarely get a like or a comment or a direct yeah. message on Instagram. So, you know, any any accolade is is welcomed and received well. So I mean, Chase, when you when you asked me to do this, and it was like, okay, share some of your best ideas from a sales perspective and how to land clients. Um, mm -hmm. it really, to me, there was like one thing that had the biggest shift for us that had the biggest impact in our growth. And that was a transition from chasing prospects down to inbound marketing, like a real psychological shift from, I'm going to cold call people. I'm going to drop in on them. I'm going to, you know, just randomly hope that they express interest in my services to let me put out value added information and get the cu customers to come to us and schedule it on our calendar and not just blind scheduled, but actually like interested and engaged in what we can do for them to help them generate more leads and generate more sales online. Um, and really, I believe when you make this transition, you go from chasing people down to having the clients come to you pre-positioned to buy and your sales resistance drops, right? Through cold outreach, 100% of the time, it's going to be a very hard sale. And they're going to they're going to be resistant because you showed up in their world and you have to be very persistent. You have to be very assertive where when they come to you, you're like they're just they're ready to go. And, and you know, you, you don't have to feel high pressure. You don't have to feel you know cheesy about the way that you approach things. And what I find most agencies do, they, they do something like this, right? They do cold outreach. So they, they scrape a list together and they send 10,000 emails or they, maybe they join the association and they get the list of people there. Um, they try running Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads for a little bit and they get some leads. And ideally it sits in the, in the CRM. Ideally it sits in high level software, right, Chase? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It sits in a CRM, but they don't know what to do with it from there. Like it basically just sits idle, right? And so you've got all of these potential prospects. You've got like the names, phone numbers, email addresses, but there's no way to engage the list. There's no way to get opportunities 
on the table. I think I went my slides out of order here for a second. But really what you wanna be able to do is have that database sitting in your CRM and touch them two to three times per week. You know, like this was a big shift for us back in 2000 and I must've been 11 or 2012, where we had, we had gotten our list of plumbing prospects. We had joined the association and one of our mentors said, you know, how often are you, are you emailing them? How often are you communicating? And I was like, I don't know, like once a month, maybe, because I didn't have anything to say. I had no reason to contact them. And he said, you got to be touching your database at least two to three times per week religiously. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, easy there. That's crazy talk. If you email them that <laughs> much, they're, like they're going to be like disgusted by you. And they're going to be like, oh, I'm getting too much communication. But the reality is with deliverability rates the way they are, with people as busy as they are, you know, if you email them two or three times per week, you'll be lucky to connect on one or two of those where they actually see it and they actually engage with it. Um, and so mm -hmm. like, that's what you want to do. The other thing is your communication has to be value added. Like the communication that you use to, to like email people cold, hey, can you handle an additional three to five roofing projects this month? You can use that play once. Right? You have to move to a more value-added approach, which is sharing case study information, sharing examples, giving them keyword lists, giving them cheat sheets and guides, Right, value-added communication. And then you have to nurture the database. Really, there's a great book by Chet Holmes called The Ultimate Sales Machine. If you haven't read it, I recommend everybody on this call go and check it out. It's one of the best books on the, on the topic. And he talks about a Dream 100 initiative. And really what you want to be able to do is take your prospects from having never, never heard of you to feeling like an inkling that they might have heard from you at some point or they saw you somewhere or they saw an ad or they got an email or they heard something about you to they're like, yeah, I've heard of this person and like they're a little bit irritating. Like I feel like I'm hearing from them everywhere, <laughs> right? All the way to, you know what? They're so persistent. I'm getting emails. I'm getting stuff in the mail. I'm seeing them at our events. They must know something. I, I should give them an opportunity to do business all the way to their, their, yeah, I'm a client and I'm a big advocate for them. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only way you do that is by touching them on a consistent basis, by being persistent and by nurturing your database over time. And as you do that, you have to offer help, right? You can't just give them information and expect them to connect the dots, right? You give them information and it's always led with, Hey, if you'd like some additional help and you'd like to have us implement that for you, I'd love to schedule a time to chat, right? And bring them into an appointment funnel of some sort. And really, I think that's where you can really open up a lot of opportunity. Like take that database that you've got that's sitting idle, come up with a mechanism and a reason to touch them on an ongoing basis. That's when you're going to get appointments with people that know, like, trust and are ready to buy from you pre-positioned to buy. Does that I make love sense, that. Chase? And yeah, absolutely. And you just reminded me of like one of my favorite hacks because I, I remember the days of being frozen. Like, I get what you're saying, but I'm frozen. Like, what do I say to these people? And the thing that turned it for me was, well, wait a minute. What if I just monitor the industry news and then DJ that content? So let's mm -hmm. say you're an HVAC and one of the big companies releases some new product that can, you know, uses less energy. Well, if you blast out to your list, like, hey, I'm sure you all saw this news release this is a great time to go back to your database and you know announce it and we can help you do that or whatever that may be. But I just felt like piggybacking off of industry news made it so much easier to more frequently get in touch. 100%. And I'd say everybody on this call is a student of the game, right? So you're reading SEO journal yeah. and you're on you know all of the different trainings. Like that information is all over the place but very rarely is it translated to your niche. And so if you just take yeah. all of the cool nuggets and the cool things that you're learning and you take that and say, for plumbing and HVAC companies, you have an endless supply of things you can be introducing and rolling out and sharing with your, with your database. Um, I actually have a shortcut if it would be helpful because you got to come uh, up, this seems like a lot of Who doesn't love a good like, shortcut? Let's go. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I got to email them two to three times. I got to nurture them. I got to add value. How can I possibly come up with all of this stuff? What we found is that one topical webinar per month is like the ultimate content lever for agency growth. Um, one webinar per month that can be syndicated in a lot of different ways. 
Um, I'll just kind of walk you through why that is. A webinar, and not, I'm not talking about the sales webinar that you learn about on, on ClickFunnels and all of these other places where you're going to value stack 19 things and then say buy now and the shopping cart closes in 10 minutes. That's not what we're trying to do here as agencies, right? We're trying to develop value. We're trying to develop relationship with our database. So this is a different kind of webinar. I'll kind of walk you through what I mean, but you can grow your database by doing a webinar on a consistent basis. And it also gives you one of the most powerful reasons to nurture your database. So by growing your database, let's say you do a webinar on how to leverage marketing automation for plumbing companies, right? Cool topic. You could come up with all kinds of amazing, you know, little tools and tactics they could use just by talking about high level. And so you say, hey, I've got a webinar coming up Tuesday at three o'clock you know, how to leverage marketing automation for your plumbing and HVAC business, right? They show up, you record the webinar as you conduct it. And now you've got content that you can put up on YouTube because it's a video, right? You can take the audio and put it up on iTunes. You can take the slides and put it up on SlideShare. You can post about this you know, thing that you did over on Facebook groups that you're a part of. You can post about it on your personal profile. You can post about it on your, your business page. And so just by virtue of creating that content and putting it out in a variety of places online, you're gonna pull people into your funnel, right? So let's say you did it, how to leverage marketing automation for plumbing HVAC companies, you get it up on YouTube. And of course the, the, the description in your video says, if you like more ideas and strategies on how to better market your plumbing or HVAC business online, click here, right? It's like click to go to plumberseo.net slash free. And there I've got a guide that walks you through how to do this. Right? Can you see how by doing that, you're creating content that's going to bring people into your world? Yeah, right? Definitely. Yep. And I'd say even more important, if we kind of look at the topic that we were talking about there before, we've got this database. We need to nurture them on a, on a consistent basis. A live webinar gives you permission to communicate with them a couple of times via email. It gives you permission to maybe give them a phone call. It gives you permission to send them a personal message on Facebook because you've got something new, relevant, and timely. That's gonna be happening at a very specific date and time. So it gives you fresh events to invite them to on a monthly basis and a reason to email them with value added touches. So really like what this is in my mind, it's a systematic process for creating new content and nurturing your, nurturing your database. So like the way I see it is, it's a reason to email them multiple times, right? We said we wanna email them two or three times per month. Well. We're going to be able to email them an invite. Hey, Thursday at two o'clock, I'm going to be doing a webinar on marketing automation for plumbing and HVAC companies. You have a reason to email them like right before. So, hey, look, I'm, going to, I'm about to go live. You don't want to miss it. Click the button right now to, to come in. Um, after the webinar is over, most people don't participate. Most people don't watch. But now you've got a reason to say, hey, in case you missed it, I unpacked the nine marketing automation strategies that every plumbing and HVAC company needs to know about. If you missed it, go back here and watch it now. Um, and so just by that, you've got three or four emails to your database if you did one webinar per month, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It also drives multiple sources of new content, right? Because you can syndicate it, right? You've got the live webinar. People show up. They watch you deliver exactly what it is that you're doing live. That's your best attentive person. Um, you've got the video recording. Like you take that and put it up on YouTube. You keyword enrich it. Um, what I found is like super cool, typical webinar is going to run like say 45 minutes to an hour of, for, of core content. Usually there's like key points that you cover. So let's say you talked about the, the five marketing automations that every plumbing and HVAC company should put in place. Like one of them is going to be smart forms, right? When somebody gets to your website and fills out the form, you want to make sure that you've got a phone call, a text message, and all of the other automation that goes with that, right? And that's one of your bullets. You might talk for seven minutes about that particular piece. Well, there's no reason you can't take each one of those seven-minute vignettes and load that up to YouTube as well. So that's how you can take one hour-long video and turn it into five or six different pieces of content on YouTube. All of them saying at the end, hey, if you'd like more ideas and strategies on how to better leverage marketing automation in your plumbing or HVC business, click the button below, go to plumberseo.net slash automation, and I've got a complete guide as well as five other videos you can watch. So it creates you know, multiple streams of content there. 
you take the recording of the webinar, you put it onto your website, you have it transcribed. Now you've got a blog post for it. Take the audio and put that up as a, as a podcast. Take the slides, put it up on SlideShare. You can post about it in a lot of different places on social media. Um, and so really one webinar per month, as so I said, this is the shortcut. I really like it a lot. One webinar per month creates at least three touches to the database, right? All of those reminders. And then six pieces of content that you can put out online and get people to you know, be exposed to your content through inbound marketing and enter your funnel from different angles, different approaches. Is this good, Chase? Am I going too deep or too? Absolutely. Uh, no, I love that. And I love um, some of those contents you mentioned, like you said, are discoverable, right? So if they have the right keywords in them, people are going to stumble across, across this content who aren't in your database yet. And so like SlideShare, that's a great one. Like those index, right? Um, Absolutely. Big YouTube time. for sure. I mean, and the other thing I love is chopping down the content into micro content for your social media calendar. So if you're doing webinars, your team can easily break that down and then build it out in your social calendar, right? Yep. And each one of those can be renamed with different keyword optimization as you upload it, as you create blog post content from it. Um, so again, one piece of content, which is your live webinar, gave you a ton of added, um, added benefits. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to share how much time are, are we good with time here? Am I going to, yeah, to yeah, we got plenty of time. So I want to share a concept that I don't think I even put it in my slides because I, I didn't think I was going to go in, you know, this path, but <laughs> all, I mean, all of you guys on the webinar right now on this session, how many of you register for webinars on a consistent basis? If you could just like put like one in the chat and I'll see like register for webinars that come up that you find are interesting and topical. All right, we got a bunch of ones coming in. How yeah, many of you attend over here. most of those webinars? Like if you attend the webinars on a consistent basis or do you like sometimes think I'm just gonna register and I'll watch it at some point? That's me. Yeah, I think that's all of us, right? That's the lion's share of us. We're like, okay, that sounds interesting. I'll register for that webinar, um, but I may or may not get around to it. Maybe I, at some point I'll watch the replay. Here's exactly. what we found. Like, this is like the ultimate um, hack for this whole process is that most of your ideal clients, right? The clients that do a million dollars or more in your niche are entrepreneurs, they're type A personalities, they're very quick quick start people, right? They'll sign up for a webinar, but they're never going to watch it. But they will, they will sign up for just about every webinar that they think is interesting. And so if you can offer those people a shortcut, right? You're going to talk about marketing automation. They're like, I want in. Give me name and email. If you offer them a shortcut on the thank you page of the registration for that webinar, you can fill your calendar because those people, they want to hear about this, the topic, but they just want it done for them more than anything else. And so this two-step process right here, so you have a registration page, which you can set up at a high level. Hey, Thursday at two o'clock, I'm going to do a webinar all about Google local service ads, right? This is big in our space right now. Um, we're going to show you how to, you know, show up in the Google guaranteed and how to maximize your leads and how to you know, do great with that. And they click the button and they put in their name and their email address and now they're registered. But the thank you page, the confirmation page after they register is where almost 90% of our scheduled strategy sessions come from. Not the people that watch the webinar, not necessarily the people that watch the replay, the people that register for it. And that thank you page, instead of saying, hey, you're confirmed, add it to your calendar, you have an autoplay video that says, hey, thanks so much for registering for the webinar. It's going to be awesome. You're going to get lots of ideas and strategies. But if you're like most plumbing and HVAC companies, you like to understand how this stuff works, but really you just want somebody that can implement it for you. And if that's you, I'd love to offer you the opportunity to schedule a time to talk. We'll look at what you're doing now. We'll show you exactly how you can tap into this particular strategy and how you can have this done for you at a world-class level. So if that sounds good, enter your information here on the side. Tell me a little bit about your business. You'll be taken to our calendar and we'll, we'll schedule a time right now. Um, I love that. That's a great idea. Works works like a charm every every single time. And so like... The key thing I want you, a lot of you guys to get, if you're, if you're watching this, you're like, okay, I get it. I want to do webinars. I'll put out content. Like it's really more about the, the promotion of the webinar and coming up with a cool topic than it is about having an amazing webinar. 
right? And we, we tend to get so entrenched. We don't do the webinar because we want the perfect slides. We want the perfect flow. We want everything to be right. We want to have good lighting and a good camera. When the reality is your best prospect isn't going to watch that webinar. They're not going to see the replay. All you need to do is promote the webinar, take them to the shortcut and get them onto your calendar so you can have them do what you really want them to do, which is to go through a consultative sales process and either hire you or not hire you to do this stuff for them. Does that make sense? That's great. That's totally genius. I love it. It makes a ton of sense. Yeah, works, works good. So I'll just give you an example. Like this is our local service ads webinar we ran recently. 130, 193 people registered. On that thank you page, we use a questionnaire because we don't want every plumbing and HVAC company. We only want to work with million dollar plus plumbing companies. So, and we have a lot of territories closed. So oftentimes people don't qualify. Of those, we had 19 strategy sessions scheduled from just one of our webinars before the webinar ever happened. So <laughs> this awesome. stuff, yeah, this stuff works. And uh, like, there's just a, a, a flood of people that did it. So don't spend so much time vexing. Most people aren't going to watch it. Right? Your best prospects won't attend. The webinar isn't the big deal. The big deal is the promotion. And that's really what, what matters. Do you want me to keep going down this track? Do we want to open up for questions? I can unpack this a little bit further if, if it makes sense, if we have time. But if we want to yeah, go somewhere else. Yeah, we've got 15 more minutes. So if you want to keep cruising, I'll monitor the comments to see if any new questions pop up. But yeah, let's do okay. it. Cool. So, I mean, really, in order to make this work, you want to make sure you maximize your promotional strategy for the webinar. So we use emails. We use social posts. Um, we use promoted posts. So this is where if you did have a database or scrape the database and you put that up as a custom audience on Facebook, um, you can really promote the webinars on a consistent basis via email and social. And what this creates is a little bit of a sense of omnipresence, right? They feel like they're seeing you in their inbox. If you're actually phone calling them and reaching out, they see you there. They're seeing you in their um, in their in their paid sphere as well. Um, you can you can really get some good momentum from it. Um, I also like phone calls to invite to webinar. Um, most people don't don't want to do this, but if you're cold calling, you're dialing for dollars to get appointments. I mean, they're not that interested in meeting with you just out of the gates. But if you call and say, "Hey, you know, I've got this webinar coming up on how to leverage automation for plumbing and HVAC companies." We're going to unpack nine strategies to triple your conversion rates for the leads already coming in. Um, it's Tuesday at three. Can we get you registered? You think they're going to be more receptive to that message or to the, hey, um, I specialize in helping plumbing companies. Can I schedule 10 minutes of your time? Mm, yeah, definitely. And with the high level, part. I love the idea of pushing voicemail drops too for your upcoming webinars if you already have their number. Absolutely. Voice drops, great, great strategy to promote the webinar. Um, and then obviously you still like the shortcut is what it is, but you still need to show up and provide great value, right? And, and like Chase was saying, you hit the fundamentals, right? You were all students of the game. We're all reading the blogs. We're all kind of studying what's going on in internet marketing. Just take that and distill the basics for, for that particular niche. Could be marketing automation, could be how to set up your website for maximum conversion, could be how to you know, make sure your website ranks for the most important keywords in your, in your niche could be you know, how to tap into the power of paid search and generate more leads and sales. And, and you know, we rotate these webinars, uh, you come up with an inventory of 12, and then every year you roll out an updated version of that. And you've got this, this constant new content that's being rolled out and makes you prolific in your space. And really all you're doing is creating one value added webinar, promoting it and syndicating it in a, in a pretty smart and strategic fashion. I follow love that. Up. So yep. you're, you're going to post the replay, follow up via email. I suggest call. And a lot of people get lazy on this. But if somebody registered for your webinar, they were interested in the topic, why wouldn't you call? Why wouldn't you have somebody on your team, like a marketing assistant, call and say, hey, I saw you registered for the webinar. Did you have a chance to check it out? Hey, you know, what did you think? Did you have mm -hmm. any questions? You know, that's going to be opportunities at the bottom of your pipeline that you just need to, you know, go and grab that fruit off the tree. Um, so don't just email, like leverage all of the different channels um, and then syndicate it, right? I've kind of talked about how to syndicate this stuff and then repeat every month. Yeah. Drive your entire lead generation engine. So, I mean, I think that's one of the key things, just the shift from chase to inbound, leveraging emails, leveraging content, nurturing the database that's had the, 
like the really the biggest impact on our business and the growth within our within our niche. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that is, like you said, it's a huge mental shift of like, instead of hunting people down. And like you said, when you when you do get in front of them, their guard is way up. They're like, all right, I don't know you from anybody. All right, I'll give you a minute, but you got to convince me that you're trustworthy, that you know, you're not trying to scam me, all that kind of stuff. When you flip it, and all of a sudden you're putting things out that are so valuable that people are coming to you and lining up, it's a whole different ballgame. Like you said, you're actually filtering people out, right? Like, whoa, 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 you got to qualify to get on my calendar now. And I think that's the ultimate goal, right? Absolutely. hundred, hundred percent. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging, Josh. Anybody have any questions before we jump? Um, I see Tim, this is great. Keep it going. Um, well, Tim, thanks for letting us know you enjoyed it. If you're watching on Facebook and you did enjoy this, definitely let us know in the comments. We, we want to do these weekly um, with guest speakers like Josh, who've got a ton of expertise and insight to share. Um, do you work with e-com, Josh? It's a question here about e-com. E-com in what regard? So we work with plumbing and HVAC company. Or do you mean like e-com agencies that we help? Well, like, do any of the plumbing and HVC companies that you guys work with sell e-com? Like, do you ever help them sell things online in an e-com fashion, or is it more services? It's almost all service-based, residential service and repair. Um, gotcha. And it's, you know, lead generation more than anything else. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, I mean, e-com is definitely like COVID has really like the numbers. You see the charts of like how e-com is taking off. It's crazy. Um, all right, cool. Let me see if we have any other questions over here in Facebook. Looks like we're good. Josh, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for everything you guys are doing with High Level. It's, it's amazing. Where should people go if they like what they're hearing from you? They want to learn more about what you've got going on. If you go to sevenfigureagency.com, you can learn more about the, like the, you know, I put out lots of great free information, as you can see. So go there. Um, you can also grab a copy of my book, The Seven Figure Agency Roadmap. Um, if you go to sevenfigureagency.com slash book, um, ship you a free copy of the of the book. And it just kind of unpacks our entire seven-figure agency model. And you give it away, right? Last thought, because I love this. And I think people are so scared when they come up with something new that's working or whatever, they want to like hold it really tight. You give it all away. Why? Uh, I mean, I find that that's the, the best way to add value is to just give, you know, give your resources, give your insights, give your value. Um, you know, in the, in the plumbing HVAC world, we give all of our content away. We give all of the, like the step-by-step -step on how we do stuff. And of course, when somebody gives you information and valuable insights, they lean in, right? They're like, wow, I want more. I want the rest of mm -hmm. the equation. And so that's why we give and it just comes back in, uh, in droves. Awesome. All right, Josh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a great day.